Hello and welcome YouTube and Grimdorn community. Today we're going to check out the Physical Blitz Warlord Beginner Guide. The Physical Blitz Warlord is pretty much the tankiest and also most damaging and also most mobile sword and board character you can play when you're starting out this game. The build will use monster frequents that are easily target farmable that support the blitz skill from the soldier tree, which will be the build's main burst damage as well as mobility. For more consistent DPS, it will use Righteous Fervor as well as Shattering Smash for resistance reduction, and then not use Warcry, but instead use Devotions that give you percent damage reduction, such as for example the Light of Empyrean or the Vire Devotion. For sustain, it will use either Leech or Healing through Dryad or Regeneration through Giant's Blood and Tree of Life. As with all of these build specific guides, I will not talk about like every single thing that you should do like on all characters. You can check out my generic beginner leveling tips video for that one instead. Instead this video will focus more on what items this build in particular should go for, how to skill this character when leveling up, and which devotions to pick. Hope you're gonna enjoy this build and let's dive right into the action. Okay, so for early game you just want to get Havis Greatsword or like any two-hander with a superior prefix for physical damage and a suffix that is either of Ruin for additional percent physical damage or of Celerity for additional casting speed and then you just want to use Force Wave and spam Force Wave as soon as possible with a Transmuter because Blitz is too far into the tree, has not enough AoE damage early and also needs item support to even work properly in the first place. For devotions, you always want to start out with one point in the crossroads and the red crossroads and two points in jackal for percent total speed. Once you have defeated Warden Krieg and you got his shield, as well as Milton's cask from Milton in Sodden Hollow near the White Mare Rift, you want to switch over to Blitz. Well, how do you want to skill Blitz? You are gonna need points in the base skill as well as points in blind side for additional AoE damage. As a filler skill, I do recommend you to pick Cadence, one point in each node should be fine. And also, if you have the Mutant Bludgeon from Act 1, you can also put like one or two points still in Force Wave. But of course the transmitter is not gonna work anymore with a shield. Other than that you can like one point pretty much all the other useful passives down the soldier tree and this is gonna be like basic enough for like the next couple of acts here. Also don't forget to go to Forgotten Gods real quick after defeating Warden Krieg to get your rune augment after doing the first quest. Choose the faction depending on which movement augment you would like to play. Go and craft the relic at the smith, craft some components at the smith as well and generally from now on start using components in every single slot. For attributes make sure to put as many points at the spirit as you need for rings, as many points at the physique as you need to wear armor and put all other points into cunning. For skill point allocation for Act 1 to 4 until like pretty much Lagorian, you want to make sure to put points into Blitz, but you need to be careful with your energy management, so maybe like don't put too many points into Blitz all at once. Depending on like how much energy regeneration you have and how you can manage your energy though, you can put pretty much as many points as you can to eventually max out Blitz. Blindside on the other hand doesn't really like cost much energy, so maxing out Blindside is like always good and there is like no downside to it. As an exclusive skill, you want to pick up the Oleron's Rage once you can at around like level 30 to 40. And for Devotions, you want to grab the Assassin's Blade, the Hammer, the Panther, and also the Bear. And if you would like to get some early damage, you can, after like putting the 3 points of Jackal, you could also pick up the Bull right away. Which is not too bad for like early damage. But later on you're going to respect from Bull anyway, so whether or not you want Bull or not is kind of like up to you. But Bull does actually definitely like help you out a bit for like AoE damage early on. And Blitz is like this build in general is like early game not quite as good AoE damage as Force Wave. So getting Bull early can be kind of beneficial here. When it comes to gear up to around level 40 like in the base acts. You want to check out the Bloodbriar's Thorn that you get from Bloodbriar in the cave at the Shaded Basin near the Pine Barrens Rift. The Cronley Ring from Cronley. The Goddess Ring from Goddess, a plus one all skills to Soldier Belt from Devil's Crossing Faction, the Brawler's Distinction from the bosses in the pit, and some flesh warped shoulders or chest because they're just like overall kind of decent for a soldier.
After Logorian, once you get to the Ugdenborg expansion, like the Ashes of Mammoth expansion, and you get to the Ugdenborg Act 5, you can try to find the boss called Bargol, and you could like farm his weapons, like you can like drop three different weapons, and what you would want is the Bargol's root. Alternatively, you can also find this one in the Ancient Grove at Vendor, so you're gonna have like multiple ways to get this item. However, it's not gonna be like the most common thing for you in general to get. Um, so what you could also alternatively do is at level 50 and higher, you can just equip the totally normal shield that you get for free in the Forgotten Gods expansion, like basically at the very first rift gate right in town at a, well, spot up at a shrine. For the medal, you want to get to the Wenigo Glare. This one will drop from the Wenigos in Act 5 as well. And also, like, the boss Wenigos that you can fight when you signed with Bearhorn will have, like, a decent chance of dropping these especially. So it's not, like, super easy to get them in normal, honestly. But, like, once you unlock the quest with the boss Wenigos, it should be a lot, a lot easier to get this medal. And for the belt, you also want the Ugdenborg Girdle now. The Ugdenborg Girdle can drop from the crabs, such as, for example, Caraxus in Act 5 in the swamp. And uh, you can also farm this one at the shop in the Ancient Grove. For skill point education around the end of normal, like after defeating all the content in normal, you should have your Blitz maxed out, your like Blindside maxed out, a couple points down in the Soldier Tree from the passives, and that's kind of all you need. For Oathkeeper side, you want points in Safeguard, Smite, Shattering Smash, and as a default attack replacer, you now want to use Righteous Fervor instead of Soldier's Cadence. And then also the Presence of Virtue line, a point in Resilience. You can pick like a one point in Ascension and Declarative Purpose. It's not too bad either. And then like one point just in Virus Mind for Mobility. For additional resistance reduction, and actually as your new proper exclusive now, you want to switch over from Oleron's Rage to Divine Mandate. This one gives you like huge crit damage and huge damage overall, which is generally kind of strong now on this patch. Alternatively, you can definitely still, if you want to be more defensive, play with Menhir's Bulwark as your exclusive, as on this patch, regeneration is really, really good, and also Goddess Rings would give you like bonuses to Menhir's Bulwark as well. When it comes to your devotions, you would want to aim next for Azraka, and for that, you want to get some points in Wraith, Panther, Stag, Ulzad, and Watcher. And you want to work towards the Vire, the Stone Matron, or the Tree of Life next. On higher difficulties, you generally want to make sure that your resistances are fixed. With patch 1.2, you can now go from normal straight to ultimate if you want to. Make sure that you overcap your resistances for the top row by 50% and the bottom row by 25%. You lose 50% to the top row when going from normal to ultimate and 25% to the bottom row when going from normal to ultimate. If you decide you want to play elite in between though, you can do so too and then you only lose 25% to the top row first. Keep in mind though that every single difficulty has its own playthrough and it can be a little bit tedious to like play through the game three times, play through the campaign three times. So at least I personally like going from normal to ultimate now on this patch more personally. However, if you are new to this game and you want to take your time and you feel like ultimate is too much for you, then uh, feel free to like keep on playing a little bit more of elite first. It currently, at least before Fangs of Asticar, does feel a little bit smoother to go like normal to elite to ultimate first. But I can totally see like normal to ultimate being a bit easier and smoother to do once the expansion releases. To make sure you have the required overcap, make sure to check out all the faction vendors, make sure that your reputation is at least at honored status, and once you're honored, buy the Ritz and also the ring or weapon augments to like help you out with fixing resistances. At level 70 and higher, you can use the base game faction's augments to also help you out via like putting augments on your gear, like your armor, and those have tons of resistances as well. Like for example, Black Legion giving you like Aether and Chaos Rest, or like Devil's Crossing giving you like Vitality, Poison and Pierce Rest for your like armor pieces. When it comes to your end game skill point allocation, there is honestly like two different approaches you can go for now. You can either go for a more aggressive setup with the Oathkeeper side of the tree being the focus here, and you have like more points in Righteous Fervor, you have more points in the Shattering Smash, and you are using Divine Mandate. Or you can go for a more like defensive variant 
with points in Menhir's Bulwark instead of Divine Mandate. Keep in mind that you only can use one exclusive at a time, of course, and you have to decide which variant you want to play. This right here is the variant that I'm playing in 1.2. This one has 12 points in field command, 1 point in squad tactics, 26 points in blitz, 22 points in blind sight, 12 points in overguard, and then a couple like points down in the passives, with actually veterancy being at 13 out of 10 points, and Minhir's Bulwark the exclusive being at 22 out of 12 points. This makes sure you have pretty insane regeneration, like HP regen, even on a Warlord class, and that is very comfortable for hardcore. On the Oathkeeper side of the tree, we have only a one pointer in the Righteous Fervor line. If you want more damage here, especially on Softcore, you can like make sure to just pump out Righteous Fervor to the max. Have 16 points in Safeguard. We have a one pointer in Smite and a maxed out Shattering Smash for resistance reduction. One point in Virus Smite and its like modifier Tectonic Shift. Then a soft capped Presence of Virtue, 6 points in Haven, and 11 points in Rebuke. Couple of one pointers down the line at Ascension and Clarity Purpose as well as Resilience. And then, of course, a max out resistance reduction from the Celestial Presence from the Summon Guardians of Empyrean. For devotions on this, like, region focused version, I'm playing Tree of Life, The Light of Empyrean, Bear, Assassin's Blade, Turtle, Obelisk of Men Here, and Giant's Blood, the Behemoth Devotion, supported by tier 1s like Seder's Guide, Eel, Panther, and Stag. I'll also leave a version made by Madly that is uh, basically min max for soft core and pure damage in the description below. This one uses a much more aggressive devotion page, as well as way more points in Righteous Fervor. When it comes to gear for endgame, I mean, if you're like playing this as your first character, then what you basically want to do is like check out faction gear, you want to refarm the monster frequency that I mentioned here, like the Goddess Ring, the Milton's Cask, the Warden's Shield, the Bloodburst, Amulet, the Ugdenborg Girdle, as well as the Wendigo Glare, and then either use the totally normal shield from ultimate or Bargol's core combine that with at least the juggernaut relic or even better the doom relic or the serenity relic or the death stalker relic from the death stalker boss from ancient grove and you're gonna have basically a very overall great build that can pretty much like smash most of the content to mimax this build in particular there isn't really like any set that's better than this setup like there is the markovian set but honestly markovian set kind of sucks compared to like just like using custom like green items so i wouldn't even like recommend like switching over to the markovian set there are great warlords out there as well though that are like for example retaliation focused around like stone guard set or a like io reckoning warborn warlord but honestly, even the Blitz Warlord itself, if you just min-max this particular version, it is arguably one of the best Warlords right now. So you wouldn't even have to like change your playstyle too much, to be honest. So yeah, anyway, this build is strong enough to get you all the way to Lokar easily, even defeat the new Lokar with the new like Sunder, that should be no problem on this build whatsoever. And with a bit more of min-maxing, you can defeat Ravager, Kagadra, or also do, for example, Shadow Realm, 75 to 76 farming, easily on a character like this. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to check out and expand the description below for Grim Trolls links and related playlists. Shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon, YouTube and Twitch. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't even exist. If you are new to this channel and you like my content, feel free to like, subscribe and head over to my Patreon to support me. All of your support will be used to create more Grim Dawn guides on YouTube like this, as well as additional Grim Dawn content for the upcoming community seasons. If you haven't heard of or played a community season yet, you can do so at any point, even when it's offline, via the website grimdawnleague.com. I hope you enjoy the content, and I'll see you around on the next one.